title of this book is Brother Eagle, Sister Sky. It's the words of Chief Seattle and interpreted by Susan Jeffers through paintings. In a time so long ago that nearly all traces of it are lost in the prairie dust, an ancient people were part of the land that we love and call America. Living here for thousands of years, their children became the great Indian civilizations of the Choctaw, the Cherokee, the Navajo, the Iroquois, and the Sioux, among many others. Then, white settlers from Europe began a bloody war against the Indians, and in the span of a single lifetime, claimed all of the Indians' land for themselves, allowing only a small tract of land to live on. When the last of the Indians' wars were drawing to a close, one of the bravest and most respected chiefs of the Northwest nations, Chief Seattle, sat at a white man's table to sign a paper presented by the new Commissioner of Indian Affairs for the territory. The government in Washington, D.C. wished to buy the lands of Chief Seattle's people. With a commanding presence and eyes that mirrored the great soul that lived within, the chief rose to speak to the gathering in a resounding voice. How can you buy the sky? Chief Seattle began. How can you own the rain and the wind? My mother told me, every part of this earth is sacred to our people. Every pine needle, every sandy shore, the mist in the dark woods, every meadow and humming insect, all are holy to the memory of our people. My father said to me, I know the sap that courses through the trees as I know the blood that flows in my veins. We are part of the earth and it is part of us. The perfumed flowers are our sisters. The bear, the deer, the great eagle, these are our brothers. The rocky crests, the meadows, the ponies, all belong to the same family. The voice of my ancestor said to me, the shining water that moves in the streams and rivers is not simply water, but the blood of your grandfather's grandfather. Each ghostly reflection in the clear waters of the lakes tells us of memories in the life of our people. The water's murmur is the voice of your great-great-grandmother. The rivers are our brothers. They quench our thirst. They carry our canoes and feed our children. You must give to the rivers the kindness you would give to any brother. The voice of my grandfather said to me, the air is precious. It shares its spirit with all the life it supports. The wind that gave me my first breath also received my last sigh. You must keep the land and air apart and sacred as a place where one can go to taste the wind that is sweetened by the meadow flowers. When the last red man and woman have vanished with their wilderness, and their memory is only sh a shadow of a cloud moving across the prairie. Will the shores and forests still be here? Will there be any of the spirit of my people left? My ancestors said to me, this we know. The earth does not belong to us. We belong to the earth. The voice of my grandfather said to me, teach your children what you have been taught. The earth is our mother. What befalls the earth befalls all of the sons and daughters of the earth. Hear my voice and the voice of my ancestors, Chief Seattle said. The destiny of your people is a mystery to us. What will happen when the buffalo are all slaughtered, the wild horses tamed? What will happen when the secret corners of the forest are heavy with the scent of many men? When the view of the ripe hills is blotted by talking wires, where will the thicket be? Gone. Where will the eagle be? Gone. What will happen when we say goodbye to the swift pony in the hunt? It will be the end of living and the beginning of survival. 
This we know. All things we know. All things are connected like the blood that unites us. We did not weave the web of life. We are merely a strand in it. Whatever we do to the web, we also do to ourselves. We love this earth as a newborn loves its mother's heartbeat. If we sell you our land, care for it as we have cared for it. Hold in your mind the memory of the land as it is when you receive it. Preserve the land and the air and the rivers for your children and your children's children and love it as we have loved it.